Hi, and welcome to Get In, We're Going Healing. I am your host, Tova. So if you're new to this show, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. This show is all about finding ways to be your best self, to heal from the things that are holding you back and preventing you from living the life that you want to be living. The things that make you mentally unable to do the things that you want to do, emotionally, physically unable to do the things you want to do, the things preventing you from living the life that you want to be living. We talk about things like spirituality, psychology, um, well-being, wellness, physical wellness, different types of things that will help you grow and will help you let go of the things that are holding you back so that you can be your best you. So with that in mind, today, I would like to talk about balance. Balance. So um, I'm going to start with a definition of balance, and then we'll kind of get into some different topics about balance in general. I'm going to throw out some quotes, give you some ideas of ways that you can find balance in your life, um, and just kind of give you a little more hands-on. The last few episodes have been a little more just encouraging, but not necessarily giving tools per se. So today, I'd like to give you some tools to help you find your balance. Okay. So the dictionary definition of balance is an one, an even distribution of weight, enabling someone or something to remain upright and steady. The second definition is a condition in which different elements are equal or in the correct proportions. So, I mean, that can be things like uh, we've all heard the term work-life balance. We've, you know, there's different, different kinds of balance that are necessary. Okay, there is balance in spirituality versus, um, I guess, let's call it real world reality, I guess. Um, there's balance in finding ways between parenting and being an individual, being in a relationship and being an individual. There's balance between the types of food you like to eat. Uh, junk food versus healthy food. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go into some of those types of balance. Okay. Uh, before I go too much into just rambling on, I'm going to try to uh, cover some of that and we'll go a little more in depth into each individual. So life is about finding the sweet spot of balance, the sweet spot, not too much, not too little, just right in the middle balance. And that's between things like the masculine and the feminine being and doing, creating or consuming, giving and receiving, laughing and crying, movement and stillness, sound and silence, lightness and darkness. So let's talk a little bit about some of those, okay? Um, Let's start with being and doing. So there's being in just relaxing and existing. I guess um, just being, relaxing, being, being one, being yourself. And then there is doing, making actual progress towards doing something. So we don't want one too far one way or too far another way, because if we're looking at a balance on a scale, if we go too far one way, we tip. If we go too far the other way, we tip. What we want is to be right in the middle where you get both. You get the best of both. You get one side and the other, a little bit of each one to find your space in the middle. And then there's no tipping. There's no falling. There's no any of that. There's just balance. So we also need to find that in our giving and receiving. Now, this can be giving and receiving energy as well. Um, a lot of us have, at least I know, be, I, I can't speak for your experiences, but I can speak for mine. Um, I have regularly had a habit of giving too much of myself and not taking in. And that can be in many, many areas. 
One of the areas for me that I have had a difficult time in is I can give compliments to others with no problem. I am happy to give compliments. I see somebody that I like their hair and I will gladly say, hey, I really like your hair. I have been known to get out of my car and approach someone at a bus stop just to tell them how much I liked their hair. I have been known to tell people I like your outfit. I like your whatever. I'm happy to give out compliments. I give them out freely with no problem. Receiving them, however, is a problem area for me. Now, we've talked a bit about trauma. We've talked a bit about self-worth and self-esteem and self-value. Um, and those are areas that I had to heal. Those are areas that I was not very healthy in. Um, and I didn't have a very strong sense of self-worth. So receiving compliments has been a tough spot for me. I have a hard time. I, I always feel like if someone compliments me, I need to in some way minimize the compliment and throw something back at them. Generally, because I feel like I don't want to be conceited. I don't want to be um, overinflated. I don't wanna have a big ego. Um, which is different than what we've talked about with higher self, ego, inner child. This in that term is an overblown sense of self. So um, I, I guarantee you that goes back to my childhood. Um, my mother was not a very complimentary person. Uh, compliments were few and far between, and they were generally backhanded compliments. They weren't compliments that were given freely of a compliment. They were often tied into another judgment on top of that. So having internalized that, I struggle when people give me a compliment. I struggle to accept the compliment. I, I found I need to have a way to kind of minimize it, to dampen it. So for example, like if someone has said, wow, you're so beautiful. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Truly, it, it, which is silly, I guess. But when someone tells me I'm beautiful, I've had a hard time accepting that because on the inside, I didn't feel that way. So in some ways, when people gave me compliments, I felt like they were just saying it to be nice, that they didn't really mean it. And I would say, oh, thanks. Um, I... I appreciate that. You're not, you look really nice too. Or if someone says, wow, you're so smart. Oh, thanks. But there's so many people so much smarter than me. Or um, I like to spin hula hoops for the fun of it, for fitness and for dance and for just the enjoyment of it. Um, and when someone would say, wow, you're really great at spinning hula hoops. Instead of being able to accept the compliment, my response would be something along the lines of, oh, thanks, but you know what? I'm just a beginner. There are so many people out there much better at it than I am. They're amazing. I reduce the compliment. I have a hard time receiving as well as giving. So I've had to try to find balance in my life with undoing the things that prevented me from being able to receive those compliments in their full entirety. That I, instead of minimizing the comment that someone gave of their own, they gave it, they gave, they were giving and giving their energy to me. And I was in, in essence, refusing their energy because I couldn't accept it. I couldn't allow that into myself. I couldn't let myself feel that I was special in any way because I didn't feel special in any way on my inside. And again, like I said, I felt like people were just saying it to be nice and not because they actually meant it. So that has been an area I've had to work on giving and receiving. Um, things like movement and stillness. There is a space for moving our bodies, finding physical movement. Um, I found, I, I do believe I, I'm, undiagnosed, but I'm pretty certain I have ADHD. Um, in the 80s, that was not something that we diagnosed people with, not unless it was super severe. Um, so I've gone undiagnosed. I'm pretty certain I am ADHD. Um, and I have struggled with understanding that for me to find balance in that for myself, I have to have physical movement. I have to exercise. I have to move my body. But I've also found that when I don't, um, when I don't take the time to physically move my body, I also 
or when I do take too much time to physically move my body and don't take the time to find the stillness in that stillness, I find peace as well. And when I don't make time and when I mean, when I say stillness, what I mean is like meditation, um, just downtime where you're being left with your individual thoughts rather than just keeping your physical body moving. So stillness and movement that kind of goes along with um, sound and silence. I was not traditionally someone who was very good at enjoying silence. Um, I, I, I've, my partner has called me loquacious, which is another term for doesn't stop talking. Um, and I have struggled with being able to enjoy silence. I used to feel like I needed to fill the silence because the silence felt uncomfortable to me. And that is, had, that's, again, going back to healing the trauma, healing your things. I needed to work through that to not feel like I was lesser than in those moments of silence um, because I felt like I was being judged in those moments of silence. And that was a me problem. That wasn't an other people problem. That was a me problem. And I had to work on that. It all comes back to trauma. I know, I know I say it all the time, but it, it, it is true. It all comes back to those inner traumas that we have to heal. Um, so lightness and darkness. <clears throat> I've often said people, people who know me are familiar with the fact that I've said this and I, I, I tell people all the time, you have to have both the light and the dark because if you don't have the light, then you wouldn't recognize if you're in darkness all the time and you didn't have light, how would you know what darkness is? It just is status quo. Same thing with the light. If everything's light all the time and there's never any darkness, how would you know what darkness or light is? Because it's just status quo. Everything is the same all the time. Um, this has been referenced in, I want to say, what was it? Um, the Good Place. It was the show, The Good Place. Um, when they finally got to the good place, AKA heaven, afterlife, whatever, call it whatever you want, the good place. Um, when they finally got to the good place, because everything, all your heart's desires are always offered all the time and there's no balance, there's no balance. It becomes boring because everything is wonderful and amazing in the beginning, it's wonderful. And then after some time, it's not so wonderful because it's the status quo. Without having adversity to go along with your blessings, how would you know that it's a blessing? How would you have any idea that what you're experiencing is a blessing because you haven't had adversity to balance it out? Balance. You need to have the light and the dark. You need to have equal parts or at least little bits of each in existence in order to make sense. Um, I've always said this too. Um, one of my favorite symbols is the yin yang has been for, I can't even tell you how long most of my life. Um, and if you're familiar with the, the symbol of a yin yang, you've got, uh, like a symbol that's white with a black circle. And on the other side, filling in the other part is a black part with a white circle. And it embodies that the light has to have an element of the dark and the dark has to have an element of the light. There's balance. I also have um, my one large tattoo that I actually do have. I have a tree of life tattooed on my lower back. It's pretty big though. It takes up uh, the entire of my lumbar section of my back. Um, and I picked that design. I previously had chosen a yin yang and then having looked at it for a while, it didn't quite fit. So when it came time for me to get my tattoo done, I ended up choosing a tree of life. And the reason I chose a Celtic tree of life where the, the image balances out with each. And the reason I chose that and the reason I've told people forever that I have chosen that design was because the branches to me signify the light and the, the roots signify the dark. And I've often told people, ooh, I'm getting chills as I say it. I've often told people that the reason that I chose that was because you have to have the light and the dark. And it reminds me that in the moments of darkness, there has to be darkness in order to recognize the light. And it won't always be dark and it won't always be light. You will have moments of darkness in your light as well. There is a balance between, it is all interconnected. You cannot have just dark or just light. There is balance in between them and they're interconnected and they 
go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And that is the concept of dark and light. That is the balance. So for me, a tree of life is a very significant image because the tree of life embodies that in a way that is also connected to nature, connected to the, the living and the dying and the, um, the waking and the sleeping and all of those different elements that are opposites. But in order for us to have balance, we need to be in the balance in the middle. Part waking, part sleeping, part darkness, part light, part living, part dying, part living of your soul, part dying of your soul. All of those things are elements that are important in order for us to grow as people. That adversity helps us to grow and, and develop as people. So um, with that in mind, um, I'd like to share a few quotes. Um, a few quotes that I found that I thought were really beneficial in helping to understand this. So the first one is from someone named Koi Fresco. And they said, balance is the key to everything. What we do, think, say, eat, feel, they all require awareness. And through this awareness, we can grow. That's something I haven't said before yet either is eating. The things we consume, okay? The things we consume, um, let's start with the things we consume physically, the food we consume. I've mentioned this to people before. Um, and this is not in any way to shame anyone, okay? I'm not a person who shames anybody. You are all individual people. You are all growing. You are all, you are all learning. You are all working through your stuff in your own way with your own individual things. I don't know what your story is. I don't know how you got there. I don't know what trauma you have to heal. I don't. So I am not in a position to judge. However, I've often said moderation is the key to everything. Moderation, i.e. balance. So if you want to have junk food, that's okay. You can have junk food. Nobody said you can't. But if all you eat is junk food, you're tipping the scales of balance. You're, you're leaning into the side of unhealthy so much without creating balance with the healthy that you're going to end up with negative consequences. Same thing goes on the other side. I mean, I'm all for people who are healthy eaters and all you ever eat is healthy, but come on. You can have some junk food once in a while and it's okay. It's okay. You can have a chocolate bar. You can have a piece of cake. You can have, you know, but moderation. Don't eat the whole cake. I mean, sometimes I want to. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm a chocoholic. I love chocolate. I'm a big, 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 big fan of chocolate. I love chocolate. Always have. Um, but don't eat the whole chocolate cake. You can have a big piece. It's okay if you have a big piece. But don't eat the whole thing. And maybe balance it in, in your next meal. Maybe have a good, solid, healthy food meal and then have a piece of cho chocolate cake at the end to balance it out. You know, um, you can't have too much of one thing or another. You can't have all sugary, junky food and then wonder why your physical health isn't keeping up. Well, because your body doesn't work on sugar. It doesn't, it doesn't grow and develop on sugar. It grows and develops on healthy food. So you also have to balance that with healthy food. Now, I'm, the better direction most doctors will imply is to eat healthier food and then have a little bit of junk food rather than eat a bunch of junk food and have a little bit of healthy food. You should, you should find a little bit more balance. It doesn't work on the, to sit in the dark of junk and had a little bit of healthy food. It should go the other way. Um, but I'm not a doctor. I'm just sharing what I know. I, I am not a doctor. So, um, yeah, balance out what you eat in a little bit of each thing. So then another quote that I found from someone named Kenneth Ede says, Everything in life has a yin and a yang, an interconnectedness, complementary and opposite force. Just as we need light to distinguish it from the dark, we recognize injustice in the world and demand justice to provide a balance. Now I could get all political here and I'm not going to. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening in Canada right now. There's a lot of things that are being exposed in our history and our past that are pretty ugly ugly it's a lovely country to live in I, I love living in Canada I you know I, I, it's the best country in the world as far as I'm concerned I'm very 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 grateful to live in this country but we are not without our faults <laughs> and injustice has been unearthed 
literally <laughs> unearthed. Um, and in order for us to have balance, there needs to be some justice coming to place with that. I will not add more to that at this time. That is a, a big inflammatory topic, and I'm not going to get into the depth of that because it is a very deep gash, a deep wound in, in the surface of Canada. And um, this is not the time and place for that right now. So I'm not going to get into that. But know that with the injustice, there needs to be justice. So I'm throwing that out there to the universe. There needs to be justice. Whew, it makes me a little sad to think about it, so I'm not going to get into it. But for the injustice that has happened to the Indigenous people of Canada, there must be justice to balance it out. That's all I'm going to say on that topic. So there's another quote by Ravi Ravindra that says, each of us needs to discover the proper balance between the masculine and feminine energies, between the active and the receptive. So here's another one I want to go into a little more, a little more in depth into. The masculine and the feminine energies. I, don't know, I think I had one more quote about that before I get too far into that. Um, yes, here we are. So a little more, a little more example of the masculine and feminine, what the heck that means. Okay. So the feminine way is to look at the potential that is available. And the masculine way is to look at what is not working and find a solution to change that. So when we balance these two energies together, the solution is to co-create a new earth together with nature, where we look at the potential of each and every one involved to make a difference. Now, I'm not going to go into the nature side right at this moment, but I do want to talk about the masculine and feminine energy, excuse me, the masculine and feminine energies. So as I said, the feminine way is to look at the potential that is available the potential, what could be, what is not now, but what could be. The masculine is to find out the problem, to find out what's not working, find a solution and fix it. Now, those of you who are astute and who are paying attention may recognize the masculine and feminine energies that exist in human beings, in dynamics of relationships. I am not the first person to say it, and I'm not the first person to experience it, but it is very common. So I will say this. Many women will complain that when they try to talk to their male friends, partners, whatever, about a problem they're having, the male decide to try to fix it rather than to just listen. And there is a constant issue with this, but there is a reason for that. And it is the masculine and feminine energies. As I said, the masculine energy is to find out what's not working, find a solution and fix it. The feminine energy is to see the potential. So when someone is sharing what they're struggling with, with their male partner, person they're discussing things with, and that male jumps into throwing out solutions for how to fix it. It's not about trying to make him not do that. First of all, one of the best ways to, to circumvent that problem is to flat out say when the discussion starts, I am just looking to share. I am not looking for a solution. Because that makes it clear to the male that you are speaking to, or the, even the male energy. I'm not even talking, it doesn't even have to be gender male just someone who's got a very strong masculine energy to them. This could be a woman because I've met women who were like that very solution focused. When you are very strong in your masculine energy, you are solution focused. You are looking for a way to solve a problem. If what you're looking for is someone to just hear you, going to someone who's got a strong masculine energy is probably going to be frustrating for you because the masculine energy wants to fix things. Now, having said that, we all have both masculine and feminine, feminine energies inside of us. Just because you're a woman does not mean you are strictly a feminine energy. Just because you are a man does not mean you are strictly a masculine energy. We all have both, phys both masculine and feminine. Again, balance, right? So in order to create balance within ourselves, we have to find the balance between seeing the potential 
of something and seeing what does not work and finding a solution to fix it. There has to be a balance. If you're always goal oriented, finding a solution and fixing it, moving forward, moving forward, moving forward without taking the time to look at the potential of something, you are missing an, a key component to that. You are missing the creative aspect. And the potential is also creative. Feminine energy is very creative. It's very, um, what could we do? It's very manifesting type of energy. What can we do? What, what is possible? If I'm creating art or music or anything like that, that is a very feminine energy of what possibilities exist. Whereas a masculine energy is when you're building something, when you are looking for problems that need to be solved and finding a solution to the problem that needs to be solved. We need to have both elements. That's how we actively, healthily work through problems. It's how we problem solve in our lives. It's not strictly looking for a solution to the problem, but taking the time first to evaluate the problem and look at the potential, evaluate the situation, look at the potential. What is the potential? What is available to potentially be built? And then if a problem arises, then we can use our masculine energy to solve that problem. This also goes into astrological signs. Um, I have come to understand that my, uh, my sun sign, I am a Gemini sun sign. Actually, the day that this is released will be my birthday. I am a Gemini on June 6th is my birthday. Six is my lucky number. I'm finding out some amazing things as I delve into numerology um, about why six has always been my lucky number and the meaning behind sixes and why that's such a valuable number to me. Not today's topic. Um, but a Gemini is a masculine energy. It is a masculine astrological sign. My partner is an Aquarian and that is also a masculine energy sign, but my rising and my moon are Leo and my rising and moon Leo is a feminine astrological sign. So I am actually ruled with both directions. I have both in my, my astrological chart with my birth chart um i have both the masculine and the feminine and i often identify solely under my gemini side my masculine side problem the problem that's there needs to be solved problems there need to be solved what i've had to work on is cultivating my leo cultivating my feminine side and just waiting for the manifestation to happen without trying to force something to happen. I am notorious. Part of my healing has been learning how to let things happen without forcing things to happen because of that masculine energy is I, I feel the need to force an outcome rather than let an outcome happen rather than see the potential of what could happen and let the universe decide how it's going to shed that out. I try to force things to happen in the way that I think they should happen. And I look for a solution to the problem, but I do it on a one-sided thing. So that on my side, I try to make something happen the way I think the solution should go. And guess what? It doesn't work that way because you can't make other people follow you the plan that you have created in your head because they are their own individual people with their own ideas and their own ways of going about things you have to see the potential control what you can control and let the chips fall where they may let it happen in whatever way it needs to happen so along those same lines of masculine and feminine my my partner has made comments we've made comments for years we've been together for 14 years this summer um and we have noted that in our relationship trying to make the other person into you, <laughs> into your energies doesn't work. We are opposite spectrums, balance. I am definitely more in touch with my feelings and my intuition in that sense of feelings and seeing the, the potential in that way. Whereas he's more solution focused and a little more masculine than that bull in a china shop kind of way at times where I just kind of plow forward. I'm also guilty of that with when I'm a little, leaning a little too far on my masculine side and not connecting with my feminine side. 
I'm also have a tendency to be a bit of a bull in a china shop and kind of just ram my idea through and consequences be damned. Yeah, I'm going to share with you that's a terrible idea. Doing that does not solve your problems. It needs to be balanced. And this is true in all relationships. I've seen it play out in many, many relationships. And I see it play out in friends' relationships. I see it play out in my own relationship where one person decides to take the reins and run the show. They've decided that they're going to make all the decisions in a relationship as to what the partnership is going to do without trying to find balance with their partner. That's a problem because balance, you're not the only person in the relationship. The other person's in the relationship as well. And if you're not consulting them as to what plan of action they'd like to put in into play or what their feelings are on something, you're going to end up with a problem because you're deciding for someone else. You're deciding what is best for the unit rather than the individual components, the individual people that are part of the relationship. Balance. You each get to have a say. You each get to have feelings about it. And bowling, bowl, bowling the other person over to get what you want might work momentarily, but it will cause more problems than it solves. Balance. There needs to be balance. You can't try to make your other the other person into you and they can't try to make you into them there's a reason why you fit well together and it's because you each bring something to the table that creates a greater whole balance and you have little bits of each other balanced in with you so that you are individually balanced so when you are balanced and they are balanced you are balanced together and combined together you create beauty and amazement, but through balance. So, um, yeah, I think that, I think I've got, I've said what I need to say about masculine and feminine energies in that respect. Um, you need to have the balance. You need to have both male and female energies and we have them all within ourselves. So I'm going to throw out another quote that I saw that I thought that, um, was really useful. Um, where are we? Here we are. This quote is by someone named Turquoise Omek. And they said, sometimes you have to let go in order to receive. After all, the universe naturally acquires balance. Now, we've talked a little bit about this, about letting go and surrendering. And this is an area, this is again, the difference between masculine and feminine, um, feminine seeing the potential, letting go and masculine trying to make solutions happen. Part of our balance is understanding that the universe already is going to do what it's going to do. Okay, things happen when they're going to happen. They happen in the way that they're going to happen. Trying to force the universe to make your dreams come true will not work. It won't. It won't because the universe sets out what it's going to do. And you are, it's not that you're a pawn because you're not, you still get to make choices. You are, there is free will involved in that. You do have to find that balance. But having said that, you also, you can't just coast again, action or inaction. You can't just coast on inaction and expect that everything is going to change for the better without making any choices, any changes on your own part. You have to change what you can and let go of what you can't. Actually, that brings up a good point. I just, uh, I have a quote I wanted to share. That As I say that, it pops up and I, I kind of want to share it. I've been reading this wonderful book um, by our previous guest, Tracy Rogers. We'll have her on the, the show again to talk about the book. Motorcycles, Moose and Magic, The Ride to Self-Love. This is an amazing book, by the way. Like, seriously, amazing. I am so incredibly inspired and we will talk to Tracy about it. Uh, but I, I made a note of something that I thought was really profound and I wanted to share it. I just have to find the page where I checked it off. One moment, please, please hold. Your call is important to us. Where are you? There it is. Okay. Um, no, that's not the one. 
Here it is. So she made a change to the serenity prayer and I love her new changes. So I'm going to something, everything. I'm going to, I'm going to share that quote because it's seriously, it's profound. The serenity prayer isn't, this is what Tracy says. Okay. I'm just going to read it word for word. The serenity prayer isn't just for alcoholics and addicts. It's for everyone. Here it is with my own two cents included. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Ooh, chills. Every single thing, person, event, except myself. The courage to change the things I can. Me and my responses to events and people. And the wisdom to know the difference, which is your self-awareness. I thought that was fabulous. And that is the absolute truth in that. Know that you cannot change other people. You can only change yourself. You cannot change what happens around you. You can only change your responses to it. Grants you the courage to make the changes that you need to make in yourself and in, what's, in how to affect the things around you. And the wisdom and the self-awareness to know the difference between the things that you can change, i.e. yourself, and the things that you can't, i.e. the universe. So understanding how to let go in the feminine energy, how to see the potential that the universe can give you for the things that you want to achieve, while also making the changes that you can make to help you achieve your dreams. Things like changing your diet, changing your exercise, um, setting goals for yourself and meeting those small goals. We talked about a few of these in the self-improvement, or I'm sorry, in the, the self-love uh, or self-care episode. Uh, so I'm not gonna go too far into that because we've already covered this topic and I don't wanna waste too much of our time. Um, so I also wanted to give a quote by Brown, Brownell Landrum that says, remember the balance, the give and the take of energy. The symbol of yin and yang is more than the integration of male and female. It's also the balance of light and dark, soft and hard, active and passive, in and out, giver and receiver. You can't have one without the other. Such profound quotes. So with that in mind, the next question is, how do you create balance in your life? So let's say you're in a space where you, you want to create balance, but you don't know where to start. How do you find balance between the things in your life? Now, I know some of you are saying, listen, I have kids. I have a job. I have responsibilities. How the heck am I supposed to find balance here? Didn't say it was going to be easy. I didn't say it was going to be a snap of the fingers and it was going to be easy, but it can be done. It can be done. So here are five ways to create balance in your life. Okay. The first one, define what balance truly means to you. A good way to do this is journaling your thoughts. Okay. To start figuring out what kind of, what balance looks like for you. So when you start to journal, you give your, you give space for the thoughts that are in your head. You may not have anyone that you can talk to about the thoughts and the feelings that you're having. Journaling is a great way to do that. Plus, it allows you to go back and review your thoughts of where you were at that time so you can see how far you've come with the changes that you've made. So when you're trying to find out what kind of balance you want, start by journaling. Start by giving yourself an idea of where you'd like to have more of one thing and maybe less of another and find out what does that mean to you, okay? The next one, practice self-discipline so that you don't waste time procrastinating and failing to follow through on things. Self-discipline. So that means things like reducing distractions so that you won't be tempted to do things. That would be like getting clear on your priorities, things that are important to you and making time for the things that are important to you so that you're not taking what little time you have and using it using it on uh, other things. Sorry, my cat has allergies and she's decided to come hang out over here and she sneezes all the time. We're in springtime allergies. And she's allergic to pollen, just like I am. And she's coming over here, apparently, just to sneeze on, on audio. <laughs> um, so you also need to get clear on your priorities and set better personal boundaries. 
boundaries are a big topic. We will have a talk about that on another time because boundaries is its own talk in and of itself. But setting personal boundaries is important for balance. Knowing when to say no to things, even though you feel obligated to do it, knowing when to say no, if it's going to encroach on your personal time that you need for self-care, knowing when to say no to things because you cannot take on any more. You will find that you cannot create balance in your life if you're always accepting things that, you're, that you can't accept. Know when to say no. Know when to say no to, to people, know when to say no to things, know when, know when to say no to lots of stuff. Know what your boundaries are. Learn to have better boundaries. Number three, be consistent with your actions. What areas of your life are you lacking consistency? So if you're jumping all over the place all the time, how are you going to find balance? You need to find consistency in the choices that you are making and the things that you are doing so that you can have that balance. Makes sense to me. Number four, plan ahead. Now, it seems like planning doesn't always go well with, with balance, but hear me out, okay? Sometimes planning is the only way to make balance. If your life can sometimes be chaotic without creating a plan, for how you're going to meet your needs, you're going to have a very hard time meeting them. You're gonna have a very hard time finding that balance in the things that you need versus the things you have to do. So sometimes you have to make plans, okay? And that means things like um, creating a basic outline of how you're going to get the things done that you need to do. Create it for your week if you need to, okay? Include things like appointments that you have to go to and meetings that you have to do, projects that you want to work on or that you need to work on, um, and then your social and relationship time as well as self-care. Create a plan for your week. Pick a day that you need to do for self-care. Pick a day that you can spend with friends. And even, I know we're in the middle of a pandemic, but things like having video chats or we're now at the stage where we can have socially distanced visits outside with up to five people. That might be something to consider. Make time. For those things plan ahead or you will not be able to create your balance plan ahead and last one number five take proper care of yourself this goes back to our self-care talk making sure that you are meeting your own needs because no one else is going to meet your needs for you you have to meet your needs you have to decide what your needs are and then find a way to meet them. And that means things like learning stuff, taking care of your physical self, taking care of your, your body, eating when you need to eat, sleeping when you need to sleep. If you need to take a nap, take a nap. It's okay. Who's going to judge you? If your body needs to sleep, let it. Take care of your needs, your social needs to interact with other people, your intellectual needs, your physical needs, your, your senses. Light a candle that smells good. Light some incense if you need to. Go outside and smell the rainy air. Like, those things, taking care of yourself. You won't be able to find balance if you are not balanced. We say it before, it's been said by many people, but it's, it's still true. You cannot pour from an empty cup. They say it on the airplanes, you have to put your own oxygen mask on before you can put the mask on someone else. You have to care for your needs. You cannot find balance in your life if you are always caring for other people and not caring for yourself. There is no balance there. Your scale is tipped. These are caring for other people all the time. This is your own self-care. Where is that? Where is the care for you? That's not balance. Balance needs you. You need to find balance of caring for your own needs as well as caring for others. Um, let me see if I've missed anything. I made a few notes to make sure that I didn't lose what I wanted to say. No, I think I've covered all that. So people, balance. You need to find balance. I have tried to find balance between sitting down and reading books, like even in books. Okay. I've been reading a lot of self-help books. You've seen me reference um, uh, How to Do the Work by Dr. Nicole LaPera. I've been putting a lot of work into reading that one. I've also been reading um, Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents, uh, Emotionally Immature Parents and Understanding the generational chains that go along with immaturity, with emotions. And I don't mean that to be in an insulting way. It's not, I don't mean immature in a way of, oh my God, you're so mature, immature. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm immature, meaning not matured, not developed. 
So when we're talking about that, we're talking about parents who have not developed their own emotional well-being. They have not taken the time to develop their own emotional selves, their own, their own emotional intelligence, their own emotional understanding. They haven't taken them. They don't know how to do that. So they didn't teach you. And because they didn't teach you, you don't know how to do it either. Or maybe you're learning. I hope you're learning. <laughs> you need to learn emotional maturity. I hope you are learning it. We'll talk about that in another episode as well and go a little more in depth into emotional maturity and how to find that if you don't have that. And what kind of things happen when you're raised by people who are emotionally immature, i.e. not well-developed. Um, but I've been reading that book as well. I've been reading a lot of books that are very heavy into the trauma side. And as much as I love working through my trauma and letting go of that stuff, there's no balance. And my partner's been kind of pushing me again. We love Star Wars at our house and I've been reading a lot of the books and he's been pushing me to read the Star Wars books, but it just hasn't called to me. And Tracy's book, it's still in the nonfiction category rather than the fiction, but it's written in such a way that it is more fiction in that sense that it, it plays out with less how to and more just enjoy, enjoy the story for the story and the lessons that can be kind of gleaned from that, but without necessarily being all about how to do the work or delving deep into the trauma side, which can be exhausting. It can be very hard to, de to delve into that over and over and over without a break. Again, balance. You need to have balance between doing the hard work and having fun and playing. Your inner child needs to have fun. Your inner child needs to play and have enjoyment. So balance. I've been learning that. It's been a, a tough area. It's, I'm not going to lie. Finding balance between all the different areas in your life is hard. But I promise you, as you find more balance in your life, you will find more freedom. You will find more enjoyment. Life will get better for you as you find ways to balance out all the different areas of your life. Okay. I think I've covered what I want to say on that. So let's get to the fun portion of our talk. We're going to pull some cards. I got some new decks. Ah, I finally did something for myself again with balance. I am a giver. I'm very, I struggle with receiving and then I will sometimes tip the scales too far previously in my, I'm going to call it my before life, my before awareness life. Um, I overindulged. I over, particularly when it came to money, not very good at money management. I've had to learn to do that. And I overspent and overindulged and kind of bought whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. I remember seeing the movie. Um, oh, I can't think of what it's called now. Um, it was about a girl who um, she spent too much shop, shopaholic, shopaholic. It might've been something. She was a shopaholic. I can't remember what the name of the movies might've been that. I don't remember. Um, but she's, she's, overspent regularly she spending made spending money and buying purchases for herself made her feel good gave her that dopamine hit so she continued to do it even though it put her in ridiculous amounts of debt yep that was me i did not have balance in that space so i regularly living in a poverty consciousness when i had money i consistently spent whatever money i had because i was always telling myself i couldn't have things but i overspent to the point that i didn't have anything to back me up when times got tough. I didn't create a rainy day fund. I just YOLO. <laughs> you only live once, spend it all. That's not balance. So uh, I, I really struggled in that area. And now things are balancing out. And I ended up swinging deeply into the other way, particularly in the middle of a pandemic when finances became challenging. I didn't spend money. I only paid the bills that I had to pay and I threw money in savings for the next time bills came around and I didn't buy anything for myself. That's not balance either. When you're so frugal that you don't spend money on yourself, that is not balance either. I've, oh, I wanted to bring up one other thing about balance before I get into the cards. Um, I saw a quote that a friend of mine posted on Facebook. Um, and it is, I found it upsetting because it was so far off of balance that it's bad advice. And the meme quote that she shared was that parents should 
always give up everything for their child. Good parents give up everything for their kids and do everything for them they need to and put their, their own needs last. That's terrible advice. Now, she was giving that advice based on another parent that is in her life who is farther on the other side, where they indulge in their own needs and their own desires and their own wants so much that they are not providing for their child. Eh. That is also the wrong answer. You cannot do everything for you while not providing for your child. There is a balance. There's a yin and a yang. You can do both. You can have little elements of both. It is important that you care for the needs of your child and provide the things that they need while also making sure that you are providing for your own needs. When you only provide for someone else and you put your needs last and you put your wants and desires last, that is not balance. You need to put your needs in there somewhere. They're not top where you don't care for your child's needs. You need to find that balance in between where you are caring for your child's needs and caring for your own and not just needs. Buy that thing that you want that would make you don't buy everything you want. Don't go crazy with it. Balance. But if you want to buy something for yourself that is important to you, buy it. Care for your needs too. I took some time to buy myself this beautiful vibrational pendant necklace. This is an Amaratsu. It is a stone that is connected to my own personal vibrational frequency. Um, I'll put a link in below. I'm going to be having a pop-up on June 22nd um, through Kate King Jewelry to find to help you find your vibrational frequency and you, the stone that will help you most meet your vibrational frequency. I will link some information in the in the comments or in the, the details below um, in the, the show notes. Um, and I will have another episode, uh, hopefully next week, and talk a little bit more about vibrational frequencies and why something like this would matter. Um, but I did that for me. I bought that for me. I took the time to buy something for myself that wasn't a necessity. It wasn't a need. It was just because I wanted it. And I took time for me and I made sure that I covered all my other stuff, but I took time to buy something that I wanted for me. And you know what? It has changed my life. It has changed my life. I don't know if it's necessarily the stone by itself or just buying something for me, but it has opened me up to remember that there's balance, that I can do things for me because they make me feel good. So one of the other things I did for me was to buy Tracy's book, which I've been meaning to get. And I really wanted to get, and I finally decided to do that for me. But I also bought myself some new tarot cards. I have been trying to learn how to read without the guide, without the book. And one of the decks of cards that I find are really helpful is the Osho Zen Tarot. I love this deck. I find the imagery on the cards to be easier to read um, than some of the more traditional decks. I find it, the, the deeper message behind it is easier to understand on this, these cards. So I bought those for me. And I also bought a set of spirit guide Oracle cards, which I've also been meaning to get because I've never owned a set of Oracle cards. I've owned various decks of tarot cards in my life. i most of them have been gifted to me from various friends. Um, over the years, I had some tarot decks when I was a teenager and my, parents were not appreciative of my foray into these things. And when my bag of goodies was discovered, candles and books and tarot cards and crystals, when my bag where I was storing all of my things was discovered, it was promptly thrown out and I was punished for it. So those cards were gone. <laughs> um, and I have since replaced those, but they weren't decks that I purchased. They were again, gifted to me by others, which is wonderful to receive those gifts. And some people think that you shouldn't buy, buy your own deck. It should be gifted to you, but I disagree. You should buy a deck that connects with you. Frequency, your frequency, your, your vibration, your energy, find a deck that connects with you. For me, the Osho deck is that. So we're going to pull a few cards. Okay. I'm going to pull uh, a card from the Osho deck. I'm going to pull a Oracle card and then we'll pull the I am everything card that we pull every week as a, an affirmation. Okay. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle and we'll see what comes out. And this will be the card for those who are listening 
this is the advice that's going to be given to you. Okay. So we'll see what comes out. What message is there for those listening today? Ooh, there it is. Ooh, this is a good one. Fighting is the card. So this card is in, uh, let me just double check the notes that I made about the, the suit of this card. So this card is gray, which is clouds, which is swords. So this is swords. Okay. And swords are intellectual mindset, thoughts, and communication. That's what the swords, um, the swords suit is for. So now in this card, what we see is a guy who is covered in explosive detonation buttons and he's covered, he's wearing armor and he's covered in those buttons. And that's because this person is very reactive. Everything going on around him is causing him, he is like ready to blow. He is ready to blow up things. He's letting everything around him get to him and push him to blowing up. He's very, very reactive. So this card is warning you not to be reactive. Be aware of your reactions and your responses to things. Be aware of the, the patterns that you have of being reactive. So when things come at you, instead of blowing up and exploding because you're just waiting to be offended. That's what this card signifies. That's what all these different explosive detonation buttons are. You're just waiting. You're just waiting for something to set you off and blow you up. You are incredibly reactive in this state. It's a warning. If you are reactive at this point, you need to be able to find something to let go. Again, balance. <laughs> You cannot sit in a state of being consistently reactive to everything and being waiting to just be offended by anything someone is about to say to you. You need to be able to understand that the things that come at you from the outside world are not, they're not yours. The external is not you, you are the internal. So whatever's going on on the inside that's making you so upset, it's time to face it and let it go. Breathe, find your things that help you find your calm, and bring yourself back to that balance. Bring yourself back to that, um, there's a word for it if I remember what it is. Um, homeostasis, that's it. Your homeostasis is your balance. Bring yourself back to homeostasis. If you are reactive, like this guy right here, covered in explosive detonations, wearing your armor, just looking for something to cause you problems, let it go. In the clouds in the background, you see the tower. In the clouds in the background, you see two, two people fighting. You see people just ready to, to set off. If this is you, find your balance. You're, there's a good likelihood if you are in that state, you have not done self-care. We are more likely to react to others if we have not been taking care of our needs. And we are more likely to be resentful of others who are taking care of their needs because we have not made the time to care for ours. Also a tidbit of information I learned from that book, uh, The Surrendered Wife. They said the exact same thing. If you are finding that you are upset over your partner taking time for themselves, if you are resentful of them taking time to do the things that make them calm and happy, if you're saying, well, it must be nice to get some time alone because you haven't had time alone. That's why you're reactive. Make time for self-care. Make time to meet your needs. No one's going to do it for you. And when your needs have been met, you are less likely to be reactive. You are less likely to be offended by everybody else around you. You're less likely to take something in a negative way that may not have been meant in a negative way. You're more likely to let things roll off of you if you've been meeting your needs. Okay, that's, that's the advice from the Osho deck cards all right so now we're going to pull a card from the ask your guides oracle cards now i'm probably gonna have to read from the book for this one because these ones are really new to me um, and i'm not that familiar with them so i'm going to um, read the message from the book and i've learned through my favorite tarot reader well one of my favorites i have actually three favorites i forgot to mention somebody last week i also really love the tarot priest I love Shanetta's Divine Tarot. I love Chloe Taylor and I love the Tarot Priest. Those are my three top go-tos. They, I find they are really, really well connected and the messages that they send are always on point with what I need to hear. 
So those are my, my advice. So Chloe Taylor says that there's no shame in reading from the book. You don't have to know all there is to know about all the cards in order to read them effectively. It's about getting the message out. That's all. You don't have to, ooh, I get chills when I say that too. It's not about knowing all the cards right off the bat. It's understanding that the message needs to come out. So, ooh, before I even flipped it, that one came out. All right. So the card from your Ask Your Guides Oracle card is priorities. From your master teacher, priorities. Okay. So I'm going to look up this card so I can give you the definition because again, I'm new at this and that's okay. Everybody was new at some time. That's all right to be new. Ain't no shame in that game. Okay. So I'm just going to go here and find the meaning here. Priorities, choice, reflection, decisions, commitment. For every new ambition, relationship, and experience you seek at this time, there's a commitment in place that must be eliminated to make way for the new. Current routines, habits, and even types of free time must be sacrificed so that you can open up to new energies. Your master teacher is present, urging you to identify what must go. Be honest in your assessment and also be realistic and thoughtful in setting your goals so that you don't overreach and fail. Your master teacher reminds you that even though the universe does support your heart, it doesn't allow you to bypass the work necessary to manifest your desires. In other words, you reap what you sow. And the best way to systematically move towards your priorities while simultaneously discarding what no longer serves you, I'm sorry, and the best way to systematically move towards your priorities while simultaneously discarding what no longer serves you. If you want to lose 10 pounds, you must release jelly donuts. Balance. If you want to work for yourself, you must let go of the need for others to take care of you. If you want to create a new love relationship, you mustn't brood over past heartbreaks any longer. The message from your master teacher to reach for something greater, you must first let go of what's in your hand. Oh my God, I'm getting chills as I'm reading that. That is such a fantastic message and so much about balance. If you want something, you have to let go of your preconceived notions. You have to let go of what you're already holding. If you want your relationship to be awesome, you have to let go of your past issues, your past angers, whatever it is that didn't that your, where your partner didn't meet your needs, let it go. I have experienced this personally in my relationship. When I have gotten upset, I have full out, no joke, when my ego, when Rochelle gets yappity, yappity, yapping, when, I, when my ego has been bruised in some way, she starts listing off every single time my partner has quote unquote failed me. Anytime that my feelings have been hurt, my needs have not been met, when my partner hurt me, she starts listing off a laundry list of every single individual moment. And it's a way to say, hey, he's not right for you. I had to learn to let go of that. The past is in the past. Ain't nobody got a time machine. Ain't nobody going back and making that change. Ain't nobody going back and doing anything about that and rewrite history. You can't. What has happened that is in the past is in the past. If what you want is a healthy relationship moving forward, you have to let go of whatever happened in the past. Forgive them and forgive yourself. Forgive the mistakes that you have made. Forgive your partner for the mistakes that they have made. Forgive your parents for the mistakes that they have made. Forgive your friends for the mistakes that they have made. If what you want, if the goal for your future is healthy relationships, you have to, you must, you must let go of the past hurts that people gave you. If you don't want that healthy relationship with that individual person, that's okay, you don't have to. You can cut them out and set your boundaries, but you have to let go of the anger and the pain because focusing on that will gain you more of that exact thing. It will not help you move forward. You have to let go of what's in your hand in order to have something else in it. You have to empty your cup. You have to empty your cup. I'm going to throw a quick reference out on what that means. Um, there's a story that uh, um, I don't know if I've referenced it in, in previous episodes, but I'll tell you again today if I have. 
there's a story about um, a, uh, a martial arts master who was teaching with a student and the student came into the lessons full of bluster, full of, I've already taken previous martial arts lessons. This might even be a, a Bruce Lee quote. I'm not even certain, um, but came in with, I've already taken martial arts. What can you show me? Full of bluster, full of, I'm, I know everything. What can you possibly teach me? I'm here, go ahead and teach me, but not open and receptive. So the, the master handed him a cup and had a pitcher of water and poured the water into the cup and started with a full cup, okay? And then starts pouring the water in, or, or you know, a mostly full, even a half full cup, starts pouring the water in and the water starts overflowing over the cup. And the student's saying, stop, master, stop, stop. And the master says, how much water could you add to that cup from what was already in there? Not very much. If you want to learn something, you have to empty the cup. The cup must be empty and ready to receive what goes into it in order for it for it to be full. If you want to grow as a person, you have to let go of the things that happened before because you cannot grow if you're still holding those things. You cannot, if you think you know everything about everything, how the heck are you going to learn anything? Because you already know everything. So you have to let go. If you want your relationships to thrive, you have to let go of whatever happened in the past so that you can move forward and receive the blessings coming to you. If you're holding on to those negative things that already happened, you don't have any hands to take the blessings. You don't have any hands to take the abundance coming to you. You have to let, I'm getting chills as I say this. You have to let go of whatever it is that was stopping, that, that hurt you before because it's stopping you from receiving what you actually want. You don't have any more hands to hold anything. Drop it, let it go, drop it. You cannot receive if your hands are full. And that is what this card, the Oracle card is saying. Priorities, let go, let go. The master teacher is saying, let go of what's already in your hands so that you can accept more. I think it's a pretty darn good advice. So our last card we're going to pull today is the I am everything deck. And you've seen that I pull this every week, the I am everything affirmation card deck created by Teresa Clark through the I am and company, I am media company. You can find them at I am and co.com. I'll link that in the show notes as well. So we're going to, Ooh, Ooh, whole bunch of cards fell out. We're going to have to shuffle again. There's too many cards came out. Just one, just one. All right. There's a great one. Actually, this is fantastic for today. Today's card is number 20. I am discerning. Another one about boundaries. I am discerning. I love myself enough to say no to people and situations that don't serve my highest good. I am discerning. This is, this is exactly what I was saying about balance. Exactly what I was saying about boundaries and firming up your boundaries. Learn to say no to things that do not serve your highest good. Learn to say no to people and things that do not help you meet the goals that you are setting for yourself. If you have an intention for a life that you want, stop accepting the things that aren't going to get you there. Stop accepting people into your life that aren't going to get you there. If what you want is a certain set of goals, work towards those goals and learn to say no. If you want time for yourself, learn to say no to other people's things. They will be fine. I promise you they will be okay. They will find a solution. This is part of their path as well. Find a workaround, find another way to get to your goal. If you say no, their world will not crumble. And if it does, it's their tower moment. It's their tower in the tarot. There is the tower card. The tower card is always seen as a negative thing because a tower is on fire and is falling apart. And the people in the tower have to leap, either have to fall with the tower or make the choice to leap from the tower. It is often seen as a negative thing because it means everything around you is going to come falling apart. But here's the beautiful thing. In order for new things to come to you, the old things have to fall apart. The card that follows the tower is the sun. The sun is everything. The sun is the beauty in all things. The sun is everything, that warmth and amazing and abundance. In order for you to get that, you have to let go of the old stuff. Your tower moment has to come. It all has to fall apart so it can be rebuilt. It's the phoenix. It has to be burnt to ashes so it can rise from the ashes anew. That is, the, that is this discerning. If these people, 
if somebody's life falls apart because you say no, it was meant to fall apart. It is not your fault. Learn to say no. Learn to find balance. Learn to accept what is for you and meet your needs and find balance between each thing. Be discerning. Learn to say no to the people and situations that do not serve the goals you are setting for yourself. I love you, dear human. I hope that I have given you some helpful advice on finding balance in your life. I hope that you will take what we've talked about today and apply it to your life. Apply that. Find balance in your day-to-day -day life. And I hope that the advice from the Oracle cards, I hope that if you are full of detonation buttons and ready to start trouble because you're not feeling yourself, I hope that you learn to feel yourself. I hope that you will become discerning so that you will not be that fighting person, that person who's looking for offense, who's easy, easily offended. I hope that you are discerning. I hope that you will find time to let go of the things that do not serve you. I hope that you will find time and make priorities for yourself, make things priorities. Okay. Set your priorities and decide what works for you. God, you're amazing. I can't wait to see where your life goes. As you work through and you undo your trauma and you let go of the things that don't serve you, I can't wait to see what you're going to accomplish because it's going to be awesome. And it makes me a little emotional as I say that because I do, I believe it. I truly believe it. I believe that you will, you will achieve your dreams as long as you learn to cut off the baggage that you are holding that's dragging you back. So dear human, fellow human, living on this big, expansive planet, who on the inside is just a soul, a, an, an amazing star seed from the universe, a soul on the inside, living in this human body on this human planet. I hope that you heal from this and I hope that you grow. And I can't wait to see what you do. So until next week, dear human, love and light, brightest blessings. <laughs>